This question comes from a long-term shareholder who's been here for more than 25 years. His name's Ben Noel. He's from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And he says, Mr. Munger and Mr. Buffett, after a 15-year period of market underperformance, you're cautious about predicting Berkshire being able to outperform the market in the future. Given this, what do you see as the arguments for longtime shareholders to continue holding their stock versus diversifying their risk across an index? Charlie, you want to answer that? Well, sure. Well, I personally prefer holding Berkshire to holding the market. So... Because I'm quite comfortable holding Berkshire. I, I think our businesses are better than the average in the market. Is it because you don't think the market values it fairly? Well, these are just accidents of history and things are fluctuating at all times. But in, on a composite basis, I'd, I'd bet on Berkshire over the market. That's assuming we're all dead. Hey, I, I recommend it. I, I recommend the S&P 500 index fund and uh, that for... Uh, a long, long time to people, and uh, I've never recommended Berkshire to anybody uh, because I, I don't want people to buy it because they think I'm t- tipping them into some sign. Never. I mean, no matter what it was selling for. And, uh, uh, and you know, I, I made it public. I, you know, I'm, on my death, there's a, there's a fund for my uh, then-widow, then and uh, 90% will go into an S&P 500 index fund and 10% of treasury bills. Uh, on the other hand, I'm very happy having my future contributions to a group of charities that will be spread over 12 years or so after my death uh, to stay in Berkshire. I think the odds are uh, Berkshire, Berkshire, Berkshire is, um, yeah, I, I like it, but I'm not, uh, I, do, I do not think uh, the average person can pick stocks. We happen to have a large group of people that didn't pick stocks, but they picked Charlie and me to manage money for them 50 or 60 years ago. And, and uh, uh, so we have a very unusual group of shareholders, I think, who look at Berkshire as a lifetime savings vehicle and uh, one they don't have to think about and uh, uh, one that they'll look, you know, if they don't look at it again for 10 or 20 years, that, that, uh, will have taken care of the money reasonably well. But that I wouldn't argue that the S&P 500 over time. I would, I, I, perfect, I, I like Berkshire, but I, uh, uh, I, I think that the a person who doesn't know anything about stocks uh, at all and doesn't have any special feelings about Berkshire, I think they ought to, they ought to buy the S&P 500 index. All right, very well said by Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. Always a delight listening to those guys. Now guys, some of you asked me some specific questions on which ETFs I'm looking at based on the S&P 500. And I'm gonna be discussing the top three at this time. You might wanna stick around for this video. If you're new to the channel, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and thank you to all 1,400 of you guys subscribed to this channel. Now check this list out guys. These are my top three ETFs that track the s S&P 500, the SPY, IVV, and ticker VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Now, starting out with the SPY, you can see the SPY having 455 billion under management, and you can see the expense ratio at 0.09%. The top holders in the SPY include Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, that's Google, Berkshire, Warren Buffett's company, Tesla, Nvidia, and the US bank, JP Morgan. I like the SPY, definitely. It's the oldest of these three ETFs. It has a lot of experience under its management. When you check the managers of this ETF, that's State Street Global Advisors, they've been in this game for quite a long time. However, one of the reasons why the SPY comes in as my number three is because of the expense ratio of 0.09%. As we get to the other ETFs, you will see how that ties in. Now, the second on this list, guys, that you guys need to be aware of is the IVV managed by BlackRock, which has, according to this data, 330 billion under management. However, I want to show you the live action on this ETF. Right now, the ETF has 334 billion under management. 
with an expense ratio of 0.03%. That's one reason why this is superior to the other one, the SPY, because guys, the expense ratio is lesser and over a long period of time, expense ratios really add up. Now the top holdings are similar to what we have in the SPY with Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, that's Google, Tesla, Nvidia, Berkshire, and JP Morgan clinching the top holdings in this ETF. Now, BlackRock manages several other funds, several other ETFs, but for the S&P 500, this is the ETF that is their own ETF. Now, my number one ETF remains, guys, the one I talk about very often on this channel, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, ticker VOO. And for good reasons, guys, when you check out the Vanguard ETF, guys, again, you also need to know the assets under management. You'd see that it's about 753 billion as at this time, which is bigger than the SPY with 455 and also the IVV with 334. So one thing going for me for Vanguard is guys, the net assets under its management. And the second thing going for the Vanguard fund guys for me is the expense ratio again. At a 0.03%, it shows that it's practically the same with BlackRock, but again, the additional factor will be that it has much more assets under management, meaning more people are comfortable with the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF relative to the other ETFs. So that will be the number one on my list, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Now, I've also gotten some questions from you guys on looking at other ETFs, other ETFs that track the S&P 500, perhaps inverse ETFs, perhaps velocity ETFs, and the likes. Some even talk about sector specific ETFs like Meta, like um, Innovation, the ARK ETF and all that. But guys, this channel essentially is dedicated to investing for retirement. And typically investing for retirement warrants that the investments are practically, at least to a large extent, safe investments. And that's the reason I tend to focus a lot on the S&P 500 tracking ETFs, because again, I believe those are some of the safest and most diversified instruments you can get on the US market. The channel again flows from thoughts of Warren Buffett, and I try to distill his ideas and share with you guys so you can see how it ties in in today's terms. Finally, guys, I will definitely be looking at other ETFs in different categories, in different sectors, and I would like you guys to let me know in the comment section which ETF you would like me to explore, all right? With that being said, thanks a lot for stopping by on the channel again, and hopefully I'll see you all again in the next video where I should talk again about the long-term ETFs I'm looking at and probably the best ETFs to buy. Cheers.